Hey, what's up everyone? Today I want to share my new mini documentary, Bad Mama, which is my attempt to help share my good friend Jamie Colleen's story with you all. So I'm going to play the mini documentary for you all and then afterwards I just have some quick discussion points that I want to touch on and just some lessons that I learned along the process of filming this. So I'll stop talking and play it for you. I hope you enjoy it. Once I got back to where I was, it wasn't enough. I wanted to be unstoppable. I wanted to be dangerous. And I wanted to be more than just a survivor. It'll go down as her second win by knockout. Oh my goodness, on the bridge of the nose of Jamie Colleen, a huge This fight is like an analogy for your life. I mean, just talk about what you've been through with your daughter, what you went through in that fight, and what this moment means to you. My daughter, she's, it's everything I do is for her, and um, this fight means everything to me, and I, I preach so much to my girls, my daughter, just never give up, no matter how hard it gets. Feel like you have nothing left. Just keep pushing forward and don't give up, and you'll come through on the other side. The overhead right catches Taylor, and it's over. Wow! Just like that, lightning flash. <laughs> when you become a mother, you don't expect to find you and your daughter walking through the streets with a bag of clothes and all of her favorite toys stacked on top of a stroller with nowhere to go. My daughter and I experienced what it was like to be homeless and to feel hopeless. And I truly thought I had failed my daughter. For six and a half years, I endured extreme emotional, mental, physical, and even financial abuse at the hands of my ex-partner. I felt completely isolated and broken and defeated. He broke my spirit down to the point that I gave up my own dreams and aspirations. I was afraid to tell anyone what was happening, afraid that no one would believe me, um, especially because you wouldn't envision a victim of domestic abuse to look like me. So with my family in another state and no friends, no possessions, food or shelter, I was completely alone and I had no one to turn to. So when we finally did leave, we were homeless. After some time, uh, we were fortunate enough to find a domestic violence safe haven to give us shelter. And it wasn't ideal to raise your daughter in a shelter for months, but for the first time in years, I finally felt like I could let my guard down. This was my chance to take my life back, to finally forgive and let go. It wasn't our fault that we were in that position, but it was my duty to carry on. And I completely changed the trajectory of our lives. I started training again. I could feel myself growing both emotionally and physically strong again. I was just bound and determined to be the mother that my daughter deserved. So to be here today, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my daughter, and I know she's proud of me. And just because we survived, it doesn't mean that we can't be more than just survivors. Overhead right, catches Taylor, and it's over! Our hardships are designed to make us stronger. Each and every one of us has the ability to bounce back, but we have to be willing to work for it, and to say no, and take a stand at even the highest stakes. So I've taught my daughter the importance of using our experiences for good, and to be used to fuel a mission of awareness, empathy, and most importantly, to spread love. Jamie, what, what does this moment mean to you and your daughter? Um, it's hard to put into words, but uh, I think this is a, a new beginning for us. And, um, you know, if, baby, if you're awake, I love you and I hope you're proud of mommy. So.
So thank you all for watching that. I hope you were able to get a good glimpse into Jamie's story. Now let's get into how this mini documentary came to be. So at the end of 2019, I had some free time and I had some bonus points left over from a local rental house. So I knew I wanted to rent some gear and whip together a little mini documentary to help someone in my small circle help tell their story. The first person that came to mind when I came up with this idea was Jamie. Jamie was actually an actress in a music video that I'd shot early in 2019. And I knew that she was an incredible woman with an incredible story. So I reached out to her and told her all about the plan and she was 100% down to be a part of it, which was awesome. A couple days before we were filming, I went over to Jamie's house to sit down with her and her daughter, get to know them a little bit more and get them to trust me a little bit more because it takes a lot of courage and a lot of trust to share a story like this to the world. And through that initial visit, I actually learned that what I thought I knew about Jamie's story didn't even scratch the surface of what she actually lived through. So I'm so happy I made that trip out and was able to better understand her story and just kind of have an open conversation with her about what she's willing to share and what she's not. So I actually decided that I wasn't gonna slave away over pre-production on this process because I, did, I just wanted to be a little more laid back and enjoyable. So I put together like a little mood board just for reference images and we picked a couple of locations and decided that we were just gonna show up to those locations and shoot and create something awesome. So gear rental wise, between my bonus points from the rental house that I had that carried over throughout the year and my friends over at Image Revolver, we were able to rent a little bit of gear. I ended up renting the Alexa Mini, some Lomo Anamorphics and Astera Pixel Tubes. And then that was pretty much the only gear that we rented and everything else was just kind of gear that I owned myself. I just delivered that entire last line with this hair in my mouth. I don't know if you can see it, but mentally, while I, while I was delivering that line, I was like, there's a hair in my mouth, so. I'm proud of myself for toughing that one through. And you would have never known if I didn't say anything. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, I had two young filmmakers come out and help me on the day. And on the day, I just kind of winged scenes while we were at the locations and just kind of came up with ideas as we went. For example, the scene of her daughter running in the street was really the last shot of the day and I just caught, kind of saw this empty road and we had a couple minutes to spare. So I was like, hey, like, would you mind doing this last second scene? I could visually in my head see it fitting into the edit and we ended up shooting it and it ended up being one of my favorite parts of the video. So yeah, that was generally how the day went and I knew that was like a quick overview of you know, how it came to be and you know the gear that I use. But I think the important thing that I wanna get at here is this one very valuable lesson that I learned through shooting this and I wanted to make sure that I covered that for you. So one thing that I learned from this project is that running gear for this particular project itself was a mistake. I really only ended up running gear because I had the bonus points and it wasn't costing me a lot of extra money out of my own pocket. But in the end, I really wish I just used my own Canon C200 and my own lenses and just didn't overcomplicate the process of having to do the gear order, having to do the gear insurance, the pickup of the equipment, the gear checks and all that unnecessary stuff that comes with running gear. Especially on a shoot like this, where you know I was coming up with ideas on the fly and trying to be creative in the moment, it was really hard to, to stay focused and have a clear mind when I had the extra clutter of something like the process of trying to deal with this rental equipment and get adjusted to the equipment that I'm not used to using. So I was definitely feeling like a bit overwhelmed on this shoot day. I was wearing a ton of different hats. I was directing, producing, shooting, you know, trying to make sure everyone felt comfortable and dealing with the, the rental equipment and adjusting to that gear was just one extra step that I didn't need on this shoot day. And then along with renting the gear, I wish I didn't rent anamorphic lenses. It was a decision that was really based on you know a shallow decision. Your job as a cinematographer, your job is to pick the best glass that's gonna help you tell your story. And you know, I was watching all these documentaries beforehand and I was seeing all these awesome documentary films shot anamorphic and I was like, oh, I wanna do that. I'm just gonna shoot anamorphic because it looks cool rather than picking anamorphic because it fit the story that I was trying to tell. And I felt like it didn't really work for this particular story 
because for one, this is a very intimate story that Jamie was sharing. And you know, to show those intimate moments, you wanna get close to the details. And then with these lenses in particular, the Lomo Anamorphics, the closest I could get while still maintaining focus was like five or six feet away, which meant that I couldn't get the detail shots that I wanted. And it was really frustrating. So that's why you're seeing mostly medium range shots because that was the closest I could get with these lenses, even when I was punching in with you know, the 80 millimeter that I was using. You know, a lot of Jamie's emotions were in her eyes and in her hands and all these beautiful characteristics of her. And I wasn't able to show the details of those and that, you know, that's really something that I like to show and something I couldn't show with these lenses. So yeah, I won't be making my lens decision based on what other people are shooting for their particular pieces because it might not work for your particular project that you're shooting. So we'll make that dumb, idiotic mistake again. And lastly, I should also touch on that running these anamorphic lenses gave me like a very unique look and kind of pigeonholed me into using only that look. So when I got into the editing process, I realized that like I needed more footage. Like I, I didn't get enough on the one day that we had to shoot. And the hard thing was I couldn't just call up Jamie and ask her if we could schedule another day to shoot some more B-roll because I couldn't just go and rent these lenses again because I didn't have the money to do that. And I couldn't just shoot them spherical on my lenses because it would have worked with the piece. So I was kind of pigeonholing this look and I couldn't go and recreate any more scenes. I actually had to go back and record a voiceover with Jamie instead of using the interview footage and dialogue that we had recorded previously on the shoot day because I didn't have enough footage to complement all the detail that she was giving in her interview dialogue. Not that I don't think that the voiceover worked on this project. I think it was great. I think it, Jamie was able to concisely share her story, but I was really sad that I wasn't able to, you know, use that interview footage and give the details that she was giving the justice that it deserved. So, and that was my fault for pigeonholing myself with these lenses. But in the end, I'm still super fortunate I had the opportunity to make this and share Jamie's story. And the most important part of all of this was that Jamie was thrilled with the finished product. She loved it and she's able to now share that as she gives speeches to women all over the world and share her message through this video, which is just like the, the greatest part of it all. And it's the reason why all of us are here today being filmmakers that we are. So yeah, definitely, definitely a huge win in the end. Again, thank you so much for watching and give Jamie a shout if you can, and catch you on the next video. Love you.